We've all picked up bad habits along the way when it comes to street photography. And sometimes we don't realize that we're making mistakes that are really stopping us from progressing and reaching our full potential. But luckily, just being aware of some of these bad habits that we have can drastically improve our street photography quickly. So in this video, I'm gonna share some big mistakes that might be wrecking your street photography, ideas for how to fix those mistakes, as well as examples of my own work and how it's improved following the advice in this video. So the first mistake is cliche photos. Now, cliche photos are cliche for a reason, because they're popular, they look nice and people like them. So what's wrong with that? Well, nothing for sure, if you're a beginner. In fact, if you're a beginner, I encourage you to take cliche photos, as this is such a good way to figure out what you're interested in and to improve over time. For example, in street photography, a cliche photo might be a lone figure walking past a snazzy background. It could be a silhouette, a photo of someone homeless or street performers, someone behind a pane of rainy glass, someone with an umbrella, a couple kissing. There's so many street photography cliches. If you're a serious street photographer, then cliche photos are fine to make as well, but just don't be lazy. Try and do it well. Lots of people love those kind of shots because they look great, they're very aesthetic. So if you're gonna shoot a cliche shot of someone walking past a wall, for example, then think about how you can elevate it to make it engaging still. Find a really eye-catching wall, wait for the exact right subject, try to include a gesture or a moment to fill the frame, and then your cliche photos will become more original and less cliche. But how can the next tip make your great cliche photos even better? Patience. That's something not all of our street photographers have a lot of, to be honest. Though some will be happy to find a spot and wait for hours for the perfect interaction. Other photographers like me only have the patience to wait around for a little bit. But patience is such an important skill to have as a street photographer and a lot of us don't really make the time to improve it, which is a big mistake. And I don't just mean the patience to wait in a location for a shot. I mean the patience to go out regularly even when we're not getting the results we want. The patience and perseverance to keep going even when you miss that magic shot. And also the optimism to know that you will start getting better work with time. So try this. Next time you feel your patience fading on the street, you can play games with yourself. Say to yourself, I'm just gonna keep going until that lamppost or the next street. Then when you get there, set another distance goal. Okay, I'm gonna go to that next street or the block over, or I'm gonna go to that roundabout or whatever it is. Just try and find another distance to just keep you going for that little bit longer on the street. When you don't feel like going out, go out anyway, but just for 20 minutes or so and then build up the time you spend out and then you'll see progress so much faster. Or better still, just try and take your camera with you everywhere if you can. You never know when you might come across an amazing scene and just having your camera on you means that you're never gonna miss that special moment. Ultimately, you can't make great street photos and get better at street photography unless you're out on the street as much as possible. There are worse habits on this list though and the next couple can really hold you back as a street photographer. In my opinion, the greatest enemy to a wonderful street photograph is hesitation. Things happen so fast on the street that hesitating even for a split second can mean you've missed the shot and the moment is lost forever. And as we know, that can be devastating as a street photographer. The amount of times I've hesitated and missed that magical shot is way bigger than I want it to be, but it is natural. You know, street photography is really hard to do and it can also be really intimidating. So sometimes, naturally, we hesitate. So how can we make sure that we hesitate less when a moment presents itself to us? Well, having confidence really helps and that can only be gained by building over time and experience of shooting on the street. I promise the more you go out and do it, the more confident you get and the less you hesitate in those moments. Remember, there is a long and celebrated history of street photography and you're part of it. You're documenting life and that's so important. To get the best street photos, it's best to shoot first and ask for forgiveness later. Because if you hesitate, you're gonna miss that award-winning shot for sure. The next big mistake wrecking your street photography is over-editing. It's so easy to do, especially as a beginner. And I think we've all been there when we've whacked a heavy preset on or pushed the contrast and clarity up. And then we look back on our work a year or two later and think, what the hell was I doing there? For this one, it's quite an easy fix. If you're prone to over-editing your work, then try to rein it back a bit. If you're editing and you think you're about 80% of the way there, then leave it, come back later. You might even want to compare your edits to those of other street photographers you admire. And then if you think with an objective eye, it might be a bit heavily edited, ship it back a bit or even start from the beginning again. The edit on a great street photo is like the icing on a cake. It's all about the content of the image that should work without editing at all. Then you can bring a bit of personality and style with your edit, but try not to overdo it. Just try to keep it subtle. A general rule of thumb for me is if I feel a photo needs a lot of editing, then it probably isn't a great photo to begin with. If you're not prone to over-editing though, you might be making the next big mistake which can really affect your growth as a street photographer. 
It can be quite easy to fall into the trap where we look for the same sorts of scenes and images each time we go out. For example, we might enjoy photographing silhouettes or small figures in an expansive environment to show scale, but after a while our images might start to look a bit samey. If you want to stick to one idea and find different variations of it, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, don't get me wrong, and it can be great for building confidence, especially as a beginner. But I think it can be a mistake to replicate the same idea over and over in our work and leave it at that, without at least exploring different ways of shooting first. I'm a big advocate for experimenting in street photography. Try shooting wide, try shooting more narrow, try abstraction, layering, filling the frame. Basically what I'm saying here is experimentation can really go a long way to upping your street photography game. So if you find that you've taken a lot of similar shots recently, maybe try changing it up because you never know how that might take your work in exciting new directions. A lot of us already experiment with our street photography, but I guarantee the next mistake is something we pretty much all do if we shoot digital. And honestly, it's got to be one of the worst things you can do as a street photographer. And that is chimping. For those of you who don't know, chimping is where you take a photo and then immediately check it on the back of your camera. It can be incredibly tempting to check you got the right shot right after you took it, but this is a massive mistake for a number of reasons. Firstly, you take your eye off your surroundings. You can easily miss or then not be prepared for great moments while checking the back of your camera. It also drains battery life faster. It makes you less connected with your environment and just all around, it's a bad habit to have. Chimping is a mistake though that I make often. And in fact, last time I was in London, I was checking the back of my camera and looked up just at this amazing moment happened in front of me. And I'm sure you can guess what happened. I missed the shot. So I'm sure we all do it, but if you can do it a bit less, maybe turn off the back of your screen if you can on your camera while you're out and about, it can really help us stay connected to the environment we're in. It will help us make better work and not miss those precious moments. The next mistake is photographing people from behind. Let me explain. If you find someone or multiple people interesting from behind, then by all means take the shot. I've taken plenty of shots like that that look nice, but they're hardly incredible images. For me, rarely have I seen a shot of someone from behind that's an actually exciting street photo. I find often the reason people photograph others from behind is not for aesthetics, but it's due to the lack of confidence or experience to photograph people who might notice you taking a picture of them while you're out on the street. Don't let me put you off making photographs however you want to, that's absolutely fine. But if you wanna push yourself, try photographing people so you can see their eyes. If you can see subjects' faces and eyes in the frame, then often this leads to a photograph the viewer will connect with far more than if it's the back of someone's head. The next mistake is something I think we all do to some degree, but honestly, it's just one of the worst things you can do to progress as a street photographer, and that's comparing yourself to other people. Street photography, first and foremost, should be for you. It's fun, it's challenging, it's creative, it gets you outside regularly, and anyone who is into street photography, I'm sure will agree, it's addicting. So that should be your main motivation for street photography, because you enjoy it, not because you want to impress other people or to have a big following on social media. Once you start making work you're really happy with though, of course you're gonna to wanna to show it off. You want to build a following, be part of a community and have people appreciate your work. But it's a fine line because if you put your work out there regularly and don't really get much attention, this doesn't mean your work is bad, it just means social media, especially Instagram, is not what it used to be. But it's at this point that we can often fall into the trap of comparing ourselves to others. It can be easy to think, right, okay, this person has this big social media following and they make this kind of photography, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then what this leads to is your work just being derivative of someone else's. It's great to get inspiration from others, don't get me wrong, but directly comparing yourself to someone else who is on another path to you is not constructive at all. If you find you often compare yourself to others, then maybe taking a break from social media completely might be right for you. Or maybe lessen how much you use it or what platforms you use. Also, I think it can be just reassuring to know sometimes that even photographers with hundreds of thousands of followers online get insecure about their work. They compare themselves to other people as well and they get down about it from time to time. Comparing ourselves to others is a natural part of life, but if you can limit how much you do it, it will have a massive impact not only on your street photography, but also on your mental health as well. If you really want to grow on Instagram, it takes a lot of work. And to be honest, it's not something that I'm very good with at all. I can never really find the time to set aside to really look at others' work and interact with them in a meaningful way. But really, that's what you have to do if you want to build your following. If you want, you can set some time aside each day or week to focus on Instagram, maybe. Look at other photographers, like their work, leave meaningful comments. And if you post consistently and constantly improve and share your work, 
you'll find other people reciprocate with likes and comments and you'll find yourself using Instagram as a positive community building tool rather than another way to compare yourself to others and feel bummed out about it. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button. It really helps with the algorithm and gets the video out for more people to enjoy. So thank you very much for doing that. Now this one is a mistake I made for ages. I just didn't go out and shoot on days when the weather wasn't great. Now, if you don't go out for street photography when it's raining or cold or gray or even at night, then you're missing out on valuable street photography time. So it's a big mistake. If you only go out on sunny days, then all of your portfolio will be of sunny day pictures. You're not really documenting life if you're only focusing on one type of weather, in my opinion. Shooting in all conditions will add diversification to your work. For example, in the rain or cold, you have foggy windows and umbrellas to work with. In midday sun you have harsh shadows and on grey flat days you can look for abstraction and creative framing. And then at night in a busy area you have lots of artificial light sources to play with. Night street photography especially is great fun and as we're coming into the colder months and it gets darker earlier this can be a great time to get out on the street for some moody night photography. This second to last mistake in this video is upgrading gear rather than your skills. Now I'll keep this one short and sweet. Gear can be really expensive and we all need gear in some regard to make photos obviously, but often we can focus more on getting new gear than actually upgrading our skills. So instead of new gear, go on a workshop, find a street photography photo walk near you or reach out to local photographers for advice or to see if they fancy hanging out maybe for a coffee or going on a street photography walk with them. Doing this will absolutely skyrocket your street photography ability and even how you see the world way more than buying new gear ever will. The last mistake is focusing too much on what other street photographers or YouTubers say, absolutely including me. Everyone has their own opinion on what street photography really is or how to go about it and what even constitutes good street photography and bad habits. So take my advice and that of others with a pinch of salt. There really is no substitute in my opinion to getting out there and making street photos. So if you're seeking advice from others, be sure to get out there and test it and find out what works for you. Of course, advice from street photographers is really important because you can learn so much from free resources like YouTube, but just make sure that you're doing what you want to do and you're not kind of being led into doing something just because other people are saying that this is what you need to be doing or this is what constitutes great street photography. I think over time you need to really figure out what it is that you love about it and what it is that you actually want to do and get out of your street photography. So yeah, by all means, listen to people and take their feedback and their advice on, on board, but don't let that be the main driver for how you progress as a street photography going forward. We all make mistakes in our street photography regularly and that's normal, but recognizing those mistakes and then working on them can go a really long way to improving our street photography fast. So what other things can you do to take your street photography to the next level? Well, check out this video next where I explore how to improve photographic composition to quickly upgrade your street photography skills. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.